Hi, this is Ed from Wise Up. Um, today we're going to have a look at saving and investing. Um, something we sort of all do at some point during our lives. Um, but I just really wanted to go through uh, some ideas that I've had in about saving in, in the past and how we can put together a, a pretty safe savings portfolio. And then also touching on investing. But I think it would be a really good idea to start by looking at what the differences are between saving and investing. I think the main difference really is that you save for the short term and by short term probably that means anything up to about a year so you could be saving for a new pair of jeans new pair of trainers go on holiday something like that or it could even be something much much shorter term you could be saving for a, a video game that might be coming out next week um, so really when we're looking at saving we're just putting away money today that we have a purpose for at some point in the future now investing is somewhat different it's very much more for the long term uh, so we don't really want to be dipping in and out of our investments because that can actually be quite costly as i'll explain a little bit more later on so let's uh, let's kick off with saving um, now there are many many different ways to save um, i just want to go through a few with you uh, which is really drawing on my experience uh, in the past um, i think the main thing with saving is it has to be painless if we're going to start saving and it's going to take away money that we had earmarked for other things, we're going to get into a bit of a conflict. So my view on saving is little and often uh, is much better than, than saving big chunks, maybe once a month or something like that. Um, now, when I was about 13, I suppose, my dad gave me um, one of those, uh, an empty bottle. And his advice to me was put that up in your bedroom and every time you go past that bottle, drop a coin in don't look at the coin important really don't look at the coin just go into your pocket pick out any coin and drop it into the bottle don't look um, that encouraged me to be a regular saver so every time I went to bed whatever I had in my pocket that day if I had anything at all I just took one coin out and put it in the bucket in the in the bottle um, so it was regular it was painless because it was only one coin uh, it didn't really feel like I was saving anything. It might only be a penny. Um, it could be 50p, I suppose. But um, more often than not, I didn't have an awful lot of money in my pocket. So it would be pennies and maybe two peas or something like that going in the bottle. But it took ages to, to start filling up. Um, probably, well, it took a good five, six years. Uh, so much so I didn't touch it over that entire period of time. I went on my first holiday with my friends. So without my parents aged 18 or 19 and we went off to Italy um, and the cost in those days was very cheap. It was, uh, well, it sounds cheap now. It wasn't so cheap in those days, but it was £147 for two weeks holiday, including flights. Um, by then, my um, whiskey bottle had, had filled up quite substantially. It got above the label. Um, so I thought it was probably a good time to check it out and see what was in there. So I emptied it out and amazingly there was 152 pounds in there so i actually had five pounds more than i needed for my holiday so i'd actually been saving all that time for my holiday without really knowing the purpose of my saving i just knew that one day i was going to use it so i didn't notice at any point that i had been saving so it was a really nice surprise when that came along and it paid for that entire holiday um i still do it now i still keep a tin above my bed and every night when I go to bed, I empty out my pockets and I put all my coins in there. Again, it's regular. It doesn't really hurt because it's only coins. The only rule I make with myself is that I never buy anything with coins. Um, I only ever use a note, which means that I always have coins as change, um, which means that I am going to be saving quite regularly. We're obviously using um, cards an awful lot more now than, than cash. Um, but there are now cards where you can top up your purchase to the nearest pound and the difference between your purchase price and the next nearest pound uh, goes into a, a special savings account that you can set up for yourself so it's doing exactly the same thing little and often on your purchases uh, but so small that it doesn't really hurt and you can just continue to do it now that's all well and good but it doesn't actually um sort of start and stop there it's, it's a good place to start in actual fact but it's, it's certainly not the end of the saving route um, some people will use savings accounts. Um, the good thing with savings accounts is they do pay interest, albeit very small amounts at the moment. 
Um, it is very safe and there is no temptation really to go in and dip into your savings account. It's quite uh, um, a long-winded way of doing that to go down to the Boom Society or bank and, and draw that money out and then spend it. So um, it's actually quite a good way to save. And I use a savings account as well. So I have two things going. I have my, my tin or my bottle where I'm putting my coins. Um, I have my card where I'm topping up a little savings account as well. And then I'm transferring that money from my tin or my bottle into the savings account as well. So um, th that balance starts to build up over a period of time. Um, now, the important thing with both of those methods is there's no risk. Um, I'm not expecting to make a huge amount of return, but I'm not risking any of my money that I'm putting in either. Um, so whatever I put in, I will be getting that back out at an absolute minimum. There might be a little bit of interest to go on top, as I say. Now, there is a third method. Um, and what would you think if I said to you, well, what about going out and putting all your savings on lottery tickets? Not such a great idea. You put your money on, yeah, you could win quite a few million quid. But equally, you could lose everything. Um, but what about if I gave you a lottery ticket which was renewable? So you bought your lottery ticket once and it went into every lottery that came out and it gave you a winnings when you had it of up to a million quid. Um, and if you wanted to, you could get your money back out again with no cost. Sounds almost too good to be true. Well, it's not really a lottery ticket, but what I'm describing there is a premium bond. Now, premium bonds cost from £20 upwards. Um, you can uh, go into a, a draw which comes out every single month. Um, you're put automatically into that when you buy your premium bonds. And as I say, you will get prizes, cash prizes, every single month. The maximum being a million pounds, the minimum being 20 quid. So the great thing with that is it is safe. It is backed by the government, so your savings are completely safe. And when you want that money back out again, you can apply to get the money back out of your premium bond. So you stand to win, perhaps, if you're really lucky, a million quid. Uh, you might get some winnings as well. But if you don't and you need your money back, well, you can get your entire savings money back. So what we've actually got now <clears throat> is a sort of a three-way uh, attack on our savings. We've got our little and often uh, tin or bottle or account that we can top up with our purchases, which is very regular. It's very painless. We can then put the money into a savings account, which will give us a little bit of interest. And we could also put some of that money into premium bonds, which although won't pay us any interest, we might get lucky and make some winnings. And all of those winnings are tax free. So there's a good opportunity to actually increase our income through our savings as well. Now, apart from uh, using savings, um, there are deals out there that help us save money. And these are just some of the things that are out there that you could actually look at um, after you leave school, which, which might actually help towards this whole savings process. So the thing I mentioned earlier on, which is like an automatic saving app, which rounds up your money when you buy things. A couple of uh, examples of those are, are accounts called Plum and Clio. Um, you can get a 0% overdraft on your student account. So when you go off to university, you will for probably the only time ever be given free money. But beware, when you uh, graduate, that 0% overdraft will no longer be 0%. There will be an interest rate attached to it. So whatever you take out on your overdraft, you will have to pay back before you graduate. Um, go through a budgeting process. We've got a whole uh, section on budgeting. Really is worthwhile trying to get into that habit just so that you can see what's coming, uh, what's coming up. So a really good idea to do that as well. Uh, we've got Olio. Now, I'm not 100% sure what Olio is. I, I remember putting it on there. Um, I'm going to have a look at that in a minute, and I'm going to come back to you on that. So uh, bear with me on Olio, please. Um, we could go uh, and have some cashback apps. Now, there are companies out there that do cashback. Uh, all you do is you log into their website, and you make your purchase through their website, and you actually get a percentage back. That could be anything up to 25% of your purchase price back as well. So uh, that's a, a really nice uh, nice way of doing things. Um, there will be deals specific for students. 
So uh, you could get student rail cards, you can get totem cards, which gives you best deals that are out there for students as well. So that's a really, uh, really nice way. I've just had a quick check on Olio as we've been chatting. Olio is, is something which um, will show you where there is a big stockpile of food. So supermarkets have food, obviously. They get near their sell-by dates. They mention that to Olio. Olio will tell you where that supermarket is and it will give you the opportunity to go down there and buy some food at cut price prices. So uh, that's another worthwhile one, especially whilst you are as a student. You can get Amazon Prime uh, student, which is half price. That enables you to Prime TV, Prime Music, and also obviously free shipping for all your Prime purchases. Um, there's a uh, card called Camel, 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 which will look at what prices have been doing on a particular um, thing that you might want to buy over the previous months and years. Uh, because it might look cheap today, but if we actually compare that with what it was a year ago, you might find that the price was actually an awful lot cheaper a year ago. So it, it might be worthwhile holding back. So that's Camel, Camel, Camel. Then we've got um, uh, rail cards and coach cards, 16 to 25. So you don't just need to be a student. That's a young person's rail card and a young person's coach, coach card. And then Captain, which is a, uh, a cab firm uh, similar to Uber, which will give you some very cheap fares for the first, I think it is five or six fares. So it's worthwhile thinking about those as well. Loads more out there. It is worthwhile. Just some of those that I've picked off of the internet just to share with you before we move on. Okay, so that's saving. So that's all for the short term. Um, nice and regular, nice and safe. But what about investing? Now, investing is when we're looking at things in much longer term, as I explained earlier. And also, when we're investing, we are looking for a good return on our money. Now, no investment ever goes up in a straight line, unfortunately. They will go up and down but we are looking for a good return over a long period of time. So that's why we don't look in the short term because these things could go down before they go up. And indeed, there's no guarantee that they will go up, but we hope if we make good sound uh, choices, then we will actually benefit from our investments. Now, do you have any idea who that guy is? Well, let me tell you, it's a guy called Steve Jobs. Um, he, uh, back in the 1960s, was very interested in electronics he decided he would start to look into computing. And he went down into his parents' shed at the back of his garden, decided he was going to make a small company. And he asked his, his family and also his friends for an investment into his company. Now, it's a tiny little company you wouldn't have heard of. It's called Apple. Um, but if you'd have invested $100 in Steve Jobs' brand new company back in the 1960s, um, I think it's fair to say that by the mid or late 70s, you probably wouldn't have needed to have worked again because your investment would have paid back so much money that you would have been set for life. If you'd have carried on investing in Apple over that entire period of time, goodness, you would be worth an awful lot of money now. So there are brilliant investment opportunities out there. The likes of Apple, the likes of Microsoft, they don't come along very often, uh, but we are looking for companies uh, that have got a good track record that make good money year after year after year. Um, big companies out there called blue chip companies. Uh, you won't get huge movements on the share price, but you will get great returns um, as dividends, which is a, a sort of a share of their, their profits. Um, and then you can sort of go for some of these small companies that might just do really, really well, such as Apple back in the 1960s. Um, there's also... Other companies out there, that is a, a picture from back in the uh, in the noughties. So that was Northern Rock. It was a building society which was based up around Newcastle. Um, quite successful. Um, its business model was that it was going to lend money to families that were going to buy houses in the area. House prices were doing quite well. Um, the money it was using was coming from savers. So people were depositing their money into Northern Rock. And then Northern Rock was lending that money out much longer term, of course, to buy houses with, probably with a, a lending profile of about 30 years. Now, whilst house prices were going up and employment was reasonably good, there was no real downside to that particular model. In fact, it made a, an awful lot of money. 
Unfortunately, what happened though was that property prices started to falter in the area and also unemployment started going up. So that the money that was being lent to buy houses was actually more than the house prices were worth. That got people into something called negative equity. Now, negative equity isn't great if you're the person that's bought the house, but it's not great for the person that's lent you the money either. Because all of a sudden, there is not enough security in their loan, in the value of your house, to cover what they've given you. Now, that's worrying if you're a saver. So savers got wind of what was happening, and savers went along. And the picture there is one Saturday morning, all the savers of Northern Rock trying to get their money out all at once. Now, obviously, that money wasn't actually physically there because it had already been loaned out, long-term loans for houses. So these guys uh, were, were in, a bit of a, in a bit of a quandary because they wanted to get their money out. The money wasn't there. Um, that didn't sit well with uh, stock prices. Northern Rock share price started to go down um, and Northern Rock shares got down to maybe a few pence where I bought some. And uh, when I bought those, I was expecting the government to say, right, we are never going to let a UK banking institution fail. We will come out and support Northern Rock and your share price will start to go back up again. That was the gamble I took with £10,000. Um, unfortunately, uh, the government didn't come out and say that. They actually came out and said for the first time ever, we are going to let a UK banking institution fail because we think the way they have run their business has been so poor. Um, we're not going to use taxpayers' money to do that. So my £10,000 uh, was wiped out overnight in one fell swoop. So for every Steve Jobs uh, that's out there making, making lots and lots of money for their investors, there are also pitfalls like Northern Rock, which threaten to swallow up all of your hard-earned money as well. So really, you need to make really good choices. You need to ensure that your investments are um, pretty sound. You need to ensure that your investments are diverse so that it doesn't all go into one particular type of business. Um, and you need to ensure that your investments are diverse themselves. So don't just think about shares. There's other things out there you can invest in as well. The main one recently, of course, has been property. So whatever you decide on, you need to get some advice. And really and truly, advice from family is one thing. But you know what? It's, it's not always going to be the best advice. But any advice that you take, obviously, the final decision will be yours. But my advice to you would be get the best advice. And for that, you really need to be looking to, to people who are registered by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. That means they have taken all of their exams. They have got all of their qualifications. The advice they give you is likely to be sound. And if it is really poor advice, then the FCA will actually help you out in recovering some of your money as well. You're probably not going to get all of it back if it's bad advice that you've been given and you've gone for it. But there is some sort of uh, comeback that you can use. So FCA advice if you are going to go down that route of investment. Right, just to sum up everything, um, I've got a very short film just to finish this section off, just on the pros and cons of saving and investing. The pros and cons of saving and investing. Imagine saving and investing like a race between